Guys, I already recorded this whole video and my mic wasn't turned on. Oh, yeah. Anyway, okay, let's just roll through this one more time. So NVIDIA announces preliminary financial results for second quarter fiscal 2023. And if you've been noticing your NVIDIA GPUs getting a little bit cheaper, although honestly, some of them could still stand for a bit more of a price reduction, that's because they stopped selling. <laughs> So uh, NVIDIA CEO says, our gaming product sell-through projections declined significantly as the quarter progressed. As we expect the macroeconomic conditions affecting sell-through, in other words, crypto prices went down, meaning that their GPUs were no longer money printing machines that could be sold at basically any price instantly. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we took actions with our gaming partners to adjust channel prices and inventory. The gaming uh, section of their, <laughs> of their uh, revenue here is significantly down. Quarter to quarter, it is down 44%, and year on year, it's down 33%. But again, um, <laughs> I think that's because they're actually having to try to sell their GPUs to gamers now instead of crypto miners. Hey, it's a hardware news video. We better talk about a copite tweet. Sorry for those of you who are getting irritated by these. <laughs> Uh, the good news is that this is good news, if it turns out to be true, which is one of the biggest problems with the RTX 4000 series rumors uh, has been its power draw. Well, Copite is downgrading the power of the RTX 4080 to 320 watts and the RTX 4070 to 285 watts, which is a lot more reasonable to see compared to some of the earlier rumors. Now, does this mean, as some of you would, would suggest, that Copite is just pulling numbers out of all sorts of places, throwing them up on tweets, so that then when uh, one of them ends up being correct, we can all point back and say, Copite leaked things accurately for the last generation of GPUs. Um, or it's also possible that he does have good access to good information and that that information changes as the 4080 and the 4070 get cl uh, closer to their actual final launch and they're being tested, you know, with the actual silicon, maybe it's looking like they could get good performance without bumping the power up as, th as high as they thought they might. Or maybe they've heard loud and clear that gamers aren't interested in a 420 watt RTX 4080. But whatever the reason may be, the rumors are now pointing towards much more reasonable, although let's be real here, these are still pretty high power draws, but but much more reasonable and closer to the 3000 series uh, than we had been seeing. Also, we got another uh, update from Copite on the RTX 4070. Uh, he'd already upgraded it to 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 21 gigabyte bit per second GDDR6X, which was already nice to see. And he's downgraded that 300 watts to 285 watts, but he's now giving us some base boost and max clock speeds. So the base clock of 2310 and boost clock of 2610 is so much faster than an RTX 3070, for example. And he's saying that the max clocks could go up around or even over greater than 2800. And uh, this would largely be due to them moving to the TSMC for, uh, sorry, N4 process uh, away from the Samsung 8 nanometer that we saw from the 3000 series. So, ah, let me get out of the way here. I know some, it's so funny to me. I'm gonna keep doing the little ah thing because I, it's just in the comments, I always see some of you guys are like, that's just the funniest thing. I love it. And so many people are just so mad. Like your channel would be good if you would just stop doing that. It's the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Well, ah, it's my channel. I do what I want guys. Anyway, <laughs> um, what was I saying? Right, so if we can see the RTX 3070 up against the 4070 specs. Also, um, given that we now have clock speeds to use, you can take the boost clock number along with the other specs like the CUDA cores and all that and pr produce a uh, teraflops number. Now teraflops performance does not equal gaming performance. It's not that simple, but it does give you some idea of the raw compute power of the GPU. And we're seeing that this would put the 4070 at 40 teraflops, which is exactly double the RTX 3070. Again, that doesn't mean the gaming performance would exactly double. Um, 
And it's also almost half of the RTX 4090 to give us uh, some comparisons here. So this is all really interesting overall. We didn't see any update to the rumored TimeSpy Extreme scores, although you can see that if you compare it to the 3070's score, um, this is more than half of the 4070, or in other words, the 4070 is rumored, you know, projected Copite's number, you know, isn't a full doubling of the 3070 while well, the T-flops are. So again, that, that kind of goes with that. Uh, WCCF Tech has been tracking the rumored um, Time Spy Extreme scores, so you could once again see the rumored performance on a chart here. And notice that our RTX 4080 and our 4090 have a pretty large gap here. And then with the 4070, um, again, a pretty far uh, jump down from that 4080. Again, rumored specs, and the 4070 uh, would be placed pretty close to a 3090 Ti. Now, one reason why I'm bringing this up, along with, um, again, the rumored, this is all rumored, 4080 and 4090 specs, is uh, for the next tweet I would like to talk about, because again, we're in, we're in rumors and tweets mode. Uh, the gap between the 4080 and the 4090 with these rumored specs is massive, right? If you look at the actual like CUDA core numbers and all of that, there's a huge gap here, which by the way is why I'm, I've been a little bit concerned about these rumored uh, performance numbers. Like something about this just feels like too big of a gap to overcome here by just having like higher clock speeds. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that. But the point is, there's a large rumored gap between the 4080 and the 4090, much larger percentage-wise than we saw between the 3080 and the 3090, which kind of left the 3080 Ti as kind of a weird card where there's not a lot of separation between the 80, the 80 Ti, and the 90 GPUs. Um, well, it's looking like, according to this next tweet, rumor, leak, whatever you want to call it, we could be having an AD102 skew. Now AD102, keep in mind 102 is where we're rumored to get the 4090 with the 4080 dropping all the way down to AD103. And again, in the la previous generation with Ampere, the, the 90 and the 80 class cards were all on the top end GPU with just cut down specs. Whereas this time around, we're seeing the 4080 dropping a full uh, GPU configuration down. Well, it's looking like this rumor is pointing to an AD102 SKU that we haven't seen yet that has 20 gigabytes of 21 gigabit per second. Uh, I would, that would have to be GDR6X, I would assume 320 bit bus, all of that. Now this is from Kitty Yuko, uh, who video cards is saying you may remember as Kitty Corgi. I think I vaguely remember some some leaks from Kitty Corgi a long time ago for the uh, you know previous generation, but I will say that I am much less familiar with the track record of this leaker. So let's take this one with even more of a grain of salt than we do the Copite leaks. But it does make absolute sense for there to now. Video Cards is just putting the 4080 Ti label on this because, hey, if it's better than a 4080 and worse than a 4090, we would probably see that called a 4080 Ti. That would be reasonable. And if you look at those specs compared to the 4090, this is way closer to a 4090 than it is to a 4080. So if this ends up being true, it would uh, this would lend itself to... Uh, NVIDIA trying to have a much bigger jump from the 4080 to the 4080 Ti than we did last time around. And again, just getting bigger product segmentation overall. I'm hoping, you know, what I'm worried about here is that if we, maybe we don't see the 4080 MSRP creep up, uh, you know, too high. I, I would be surprised if we didn't see it go up to at least $800. But, but if we see 4080 Ti pricing like this, all the way up around that $1,200 mark, like we saw with the um, you know 3080 Ti. I, I, I'm I'm wondering if Nvidia is trying to shift more of their performance higher uh, to keep the, um, especially initially the competition with the 3,000 series cards that they still need to sell. <laughs> you know, don't put too much pricing pressure on that, which is bad for the consumer if we see it, but. Uh, anyway, um, this also shows us the uh, the rumored you know power draw decreases and all of that that we saw from the previous rumors. Again, a hundred watts down on that TGP number that we're seeing there. 
No, let's jump into some AMD rumors now, uh, or and th these look pretty good. Uh, I mean, one thing is is ta let's talk pricing. So we're seeing Greymon, uh, our, our Digimon over here, who who leaks all sorts of things, especially seems AMD related, uh, saying that he's heard the price of the 5800X3D will have to reduce next month because Zen 4 gaming performance uh, would be competing with that. Now, do we know anything about Zen 4 pricing? There's been a few people trying to predict it. Here's the latest thing I've found. Uh, Video Card says that they have received, but have been unable to confirm with other sources. So again, this might not be correct. <laughs> They've received this picture of the Ryzen 9 packaging. But I don't care so much about what that package looks like. I care a lot more about the information that apparently came with it, which was phrased like this. The Ryzen 7 7700X MSRP should be equal to this Ryzen 7 5700X MSRP. And then the 7800X MSRP will be greater than the Ryzen 7 5800X MSRP, and the Ryzen 9 SKUs will be greater than the Ryzen 9 SKUs from the 5000 series. So what does that look like? If you put that into a table here and actually look at the um, 5000 series pricing, it shows that the, um, so the 5700X launched at 299. And if you're like, why did it cost the same as a 5600X? Um, well, that's because the 5600X came out when the 5000 series launched and the 5700X came out like a year or more later. This is a much more recent CPU um, and, and came in at that price because the prices on the rest of them had actually fallen by that point. But that's good news because the rumor is that the 7700X will be part of the initial launch of the 7000 series. So if that actually came in at 299, that's at least a lot better than when we saw the Ryzen 57 5800X coming in at $449, like we saw with the 5000 series. So it'd be really nice to see this, also especially because for the more value-oriented gamers, the 7600X is gonna be, uh, should at least be the value product proposition. And if the 7700X is coming in at 299, then the 7600X would have to come in below that, uh, which is nice because the 5600X came in at that 299 number. Now, I would love to see something as low as 199. We'll see. Um, we don't apparently have any information on that. And again, we're seeing the um, 70, uh, 900 and 7950X, it will apparently cost more than their, their predecessors. So we'll see what happens overall. Uh, if some of you guys are wondering, like, should you wait for these to release? I mean, maybe. You can get some really good gaming per performance already with the 5600 non-X. Um, and we should see a jump here, but I don't think from a value proposition, the initial launch is going to be very, very good value for this. We'll see what happens. I think you're going to have to wait a while for prices to come down for this to be compelling for a value-oriented, like, 7600X build. Because here's the problem. Um, the... Ryzen 7000 uh, series, again, will be launching with DDR5 memory support. And DDR5 memory is still more expensive than DDR4. And then also, usually initially, the, uh, the higher end motherboards launch first, and we don't get the cheaper ones until later on. So I really don't think um, you have to wait if, if you're, if you're kind of thinking, should you wait for these? I'm not saying you couldn't. And if you're going for a higher end build, then maybe waiting for these would make sense. Uh, now we do have some information regarding motherboards and memory, by the way. It's looking like some reviewers are actually already getting shipped their X670E motherboards for testing. And that's also getting us to dig into uh, some of the memory support and, and, and speeds. So a lot of information is coming out on that. I think one of the more interesting things I saw here was WCCF Tech reporting that DDR5 6000 memory speeds will be the sweet spot for AMD Ryzen 7000 uh, because that's the best you can do with one-to-one -one infinity fabric ratio. Um, now, I don't want to go too far into the weeds on this overclocking stuff before these boards are even out there. Um, but basically what's happening is if you have to go past the, the DDR5 6000 speeds, 
you'll have to drop down to a one to two infinity clock ratio. And that would um, increase the latency, which would probably not be good for your gaming performance. So you can go to higher bandwidths, but they won't be ideal for gaming performance according to what we're seeing here initially. And speaking of people getting their hands on these boards and digging into it, uh, we're seeing reported that um, it looks like Oneismus, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, has dug into the BIOS, uh, BIOS settings and is reporting on some of the overclocking features that will be available for Zen 4, seeing active memory timing settings features with memory target speeds, max infinity uh, fabric frequency at 3000 megahertz, L clock frequency control, VDDIO voltage control, lots of stuff, VPP voltage control, U clock mode, PBO and curb optimizer, all of those look like no changes from the... Uh, uh, anyway, I'll just keep going fast here. We've got the timings per channel, A, B, C, and D, extreme memory profile, XMP and EXPO operates in two modes. There's a low latency and a high bandwidth. I think that relates to what we were just seeing here, where I think DDR6000 is where you get the low latency, and then if you go past that, you'll probably get into a higher bandwidth, but worse latency kind of thing is what I'm expecting there. Active OC tuner with two settings. Um, async, uh, CPU, PCIe clocks, lots of stuff, host clocks, CCX controls, lots of stuff. I don't want to, like I said, spend too long here, but I link all my articles in the description. So feel free to di dive into these two WCCF tech articles if you want more information about uh, these settings. Now, do we have anything coming from the uh, Intel side of things? Well, they posted this massive Arc GPU article uh, <laughs> on their website. But when I dug through it, there was basically no, almost no new information. I think this is the first time I've seen this render of an Arc A770. Yay. Uh, and then it looks like the gaming bus is still happening. So it looks like the Arc gaming truck is still gonna be coming around, although to where? I don't know. But if you wanna get your hands on an Arc GPU without infecting your computer with its software, uh, maybe <laughs> you can find the uh, Intel Arc truck uh, somewhere uh, where you could play with one. I mean, it could be fun uh, to mess around with at least, although I don't know if you should buy one. <laughs> now, uh, Intel did announce the Arc Pro A40 and A50 professional desktop GPUs. It's looking like these will be mostly bundled uh, with pre-built systems, so I'm not gonna talk too much about that given my channel is a little more gaming focused. Um, but there you go, those are out. And then we are getting some new um, graphics drivers are ready to download from NVIDIA. And it looks like the highlight here is the Spider-Man remastered game ready drivers. And that game's coming out here pretty soon. Um, are you guys interested in benchmarks on the channel? I might be pretty busy this next week. Uh, I got family coming into town and all of that, but I might have some chances to slip down into the basement and maybe at least see what my GTX 1060 can do. Maybe some other GPUs. I am interested in seeing the ray tracing performance and all of that. Um, looks like this also comes with some more official G-Sync compatibility uh, for some more displays, uh, some new optimal settings, uh, for some more games and some fixed driver issues. Because yes, NVIDIA does have driver issues and they do fix them, but there's still some known issues that have not been fixed yet. So yes, contrary to what comments you might see, yes, uh, sometimes you do have a driver issue every now and then on an NVIDIA GPU as well. Anyway, I hope all of you have an excellent day and I hope that my microphone actually worked this time.